hello family welcome again to my channel we are going to be talking about what i spend in the uk as a family of five even if you're single you're married you're planning on bringing your family to the uk you know on this channel we are all about helping each other and making your uk experience or your immigration experience a better experience let's start by talking about my personal circumstance which is i live in scotland presently with my husband and three young children so where you live the number of rooms you live is going to affect how much you're going to be spending on council tax on feeding and your rent of course so you should consider my personal circumstance when you're thinking about how much i'm going to be spending in a month and it depends on what part of the uk you're living if you're living in london if you're living in northern ireland scotland england wales or any part of the uk you're living your rent is definitely going to be affected even if you're living in the countryside in the city center for instance i'm in scotland if i'm living in the center of edinburgh it's different from what i'll pay living in the countryside where i am so you look at all these things to be able to figure out how much you're going to be spending on accommodation on some other things which i'll be mentioning in this video to have a very better idea of what you'll be spending just go to zoopla go to gumtree go to right move these are some of the sites where you can type in where you've been allocated or where you're intending to go what part of the uk you're intending to go and check how much houses are flat whatever accommodation you want to get how much they're going to cost you because they are very important and one very important thing i'm going to tell you is to also save money make sure you try to look for house very close to where you're going to be working for instance you're paying rent or 500 pounds and then you need to transport every month to your workplace or for about maybe 200 pounds so at the end of the day your expenses are going to be going to like 700 or like when you get a house or a flat very close to your office for that same 500 pounds and you just need to walk 5-10 minutes to your workplace you're saving 200 pounds already on transportation so please try to look for houses very close to your workplace what you do is when you're searching on google go to google map especially if you've gotten your job already you know where you're going to be working put your workplace and then search for houses in the radius of 10 5 miles away from where you're going to be working and see how far it's going to be before you even decide on accepting any accommodation but if you don't find of course then you can decide on getting a place that is going to be very far but then remember you're going to be spending on transportation for my three bedroom house i pay 720 if you've not seen my old video i had a video where i showed you what my house look like it is a three bedroom which has two double rooms one single room one bathroom one kitchen one sitting room one storage room and one very small room for where the heater is so that is what is entailed in my house you can check the description box for when the house was empty i made a video and i showed you what to expect if you're moving to the uk what your house may look like if you're coming to the uk in a three bedroom house so we can go back and please check that video out so shared a long time ago about over 10 months ago how much i was spending in the uk and nothing much has changed just this is just a little update because the quality of that video then and my living circumstance has changed a little bit so this is just an update of that video of what i spent in the uk you can also check out that video to see if there's anything that has changed you have very good idea before you even think of packing your bag and being excited because you're coming to end all those plans you also need to consider that you're going to be paying all of these things out of that money you're going to be getting when i just came to the uk because i came alone i was living in a house shared house they call it shared house a family had maybe like five bedroom house and they were renting out two of the rooms myself and my colleague we rented one of the rooms each one of us were, were paying 550 for an in suit meaning there's a bathroom in the room where you yourself you have your bathroom to yourself in your room the other room was 400 is just because there's no in suit into share bathroom with others shared the kitchen share the sitting area if you're single and you're trying to come to the uk this is an option for you to have a shared house if maybe you're trying to just start afresh you know before you begin to understand everything and if accommodation is too expensive for you but you can decide to get even one bedroom two bedroom flats which will be from ranging from 350 400 500 depending on what part of the uk you're going to be living if you're living in london remember it is extremely expensive in london especially if you've got family like i remember in my last video somebody made a comment and said they pay one thousand for just one bedroom so imagine i'm paying half of that price for a three bedroom in scotland so where you're living is going to depend on how much you're going to be spending but don't forget also that your salary is also going to reflect if where you're living is expensive your salary will be higher you expect it to be higher people in london they take far better than me because they are in london their cost of living transportation and every other thing is more expensive than me that i'm living in scotland in countryside so 
that is something you should also consider before you think, oh, it's too expensive, blah, blah, blah. I want to go to that place because it's too expensive. Also remember that you're going to be earning a higher salary than me if you're living in those expensive places. One other thing I pay a lot for is my council tax. Yes, I pay council tax. Council tax is what we pay to the government so they can take care of our wastes, our bin, which is either recyclable, our food bin, our general waste, garden waste. There's a calendar where they come, they pick it up in the morning. So that is what we pay for our waste. Our water, because I don't pay for water, is also in the council tax. To take care of the environment, make sure the place is tidy, beautiful, and the road is in good condition. To pay the police, just to keep you safe and comfortable in your environment. So we pay council tax in Scotland, in England, in Wales, and some other part of the UK. But Northern Ireland, they don't pay council tax. And that's why they always say that they live cheaper than us. Of course, true, they live cheaper than us because accommodation in Northern Ireland is cheaper than any other part of the UK. They don't pay council tax in Northern Ireland, which is one part where you save money. I have a video on where, to, what part of the UK should you stay. So you can see, check out those videos also to have an idea of the part of the UK where the expenses are not the same. So yes, I pay council tax, and what I pay for council tax is hundred and thirteen pounds. The best thing I will tell you tip is. Just set direct debits for some of these bills because you cannot keep up with all the bills you need to pay every month and it's not the same day, deduction this, deduction that. So all I do is just set direct debit, which means they will have to just write to the to your bank that they are supposed to be taking this amount of money every month and your bank will grant it every month. You don't need to bother. All you know is <laughs> just leave money in your account and the money will just keep going, keep going. And one advantage of having direct debit is you'll be able to build your credit score. That's another topic for another day. Credit score will help you in the future to either apply for mortgage, which is your house, to apply for loan, to apply for anything. It will help you if you have direct debit and it's showing that you're always paying your bills. Those money you're not owing is a very good way of building your credit score. So yes, just set direct debit and all those money. Let it flow. Let it flow. Spend the money. <laughs> so yes, I pay £113 every month for my council tax because... Yeah, your country tax will also depend on how how warm your house is, how cold your house gets because some roof, some house are very cold even with heater. If there's no double window, it's a lot of story that ha that determine what your country tax will be, how many bedroom you've got. Uh, if you're single, let me tell you this: if you're single and you're living alone, remember to apply for twenty five percent discount. Before my family came, I applied, but before I knew, I'd already paid for council tax for like maybe. How many months before I knew it and I was like, oh, I would have gotten 25% discount if you're living alone because then you're not expected to have as much waste. You are not expected to use as much water. You're not expected to use as much heating or any of those things as somebody who has got children, let's like say four, five, three children. So if you're living alone, you're going to be single, remember to apply for council tax discount and it can save you a lot of money. One other thing you're going to be spending money on is going to be either your transportation or your car. Before I change my job, I also have a video when I was thinking of changing my job. I can do a detailed video on, about changing job. If you're really interested in that topic, drop a comment down below and I'm going to be doing that video for you. If you want to hear about how I changed my job, why I changed my job, what job did I change to and how did I do everything. But I changed my job. Before I changed that job, I used to drive to work, 25 minutes to work and 25 minutes back without hold up, without stopping. It is a straight road, clear road, 25 minutes drive. So you know it is a long distance. I drive to and fro and I was spending, I had, then I had a car that I was fueling and I was spending up to about 200 pounds on fuel alone. But that will depend on what type of car you're using. The engine size, size is it 1.4, 1.8, 1.2, you know? So those things will also determine how fast your car will run, how, how much fuel your car is going to consume. Is it diesel? Is it petrol? Those are the, some of the things that actually determine how much you're going to be spending on fuel. So then I was spending, um, let's say 200 pounds monthly on fuel. Insurance, because you need to get car insurance. Insurance is not even optional. You need to get car insurance to say in case you have an accident, in case anything happens to your car, they're going to be responsible for fixing your car or fixing the car of the other person. Or God forbid something happened and you kill somebody. Those are the ones that will, that will stand by you to defend you, to say this is what happened and to help you even um, revive your car, restore it or give you a new car, whatever it is. Depend on what type of car you're using. If your car is 1990 car, you know, the car is having more risk of having accident, unlike when your car is 2021 model, new cha-cha-cha car, you know. You don't stand 
higher risk of having accidents. So the type of car you drive will also determine how much you're going to be spending on insurance. I remember when I first came, my car insurance then was over 1,000 plus a year, which was amounting to about 120 pounds every month just for car insurance. And at the end of that, my first one year, I got a certificate to say I had no claim. That means I did not use any of that money. I just spent over 1,000 plus on car insurance and I never phoned them for anything. I was not involved in an accident. And my car did not break down, nothing, but the money is just gone to the government. <laughs> It's painful, but then you have to just save yourself by paying this thing. You can't just say that because you don't need it. No, it is very important. You need to get yourself insured. And I was using Admira Insurance uh about 120 pounds but then i've changed various car after that my first experience and the the car we've got presently what we pay for insurance is just 20 pounds per month <laughs> can you see the difference it's just 20 pounds per month the difference is just too much before i was paying 120 a month that is i've saved 100 pounds a month because now i've been in the uk for longer your license will also determine how much you're going to be paying for car insurance. If you're driving with your country uh, license, you know, international license, if you're driving with a uh, provisional license, or if you've got the UK license, they will consider these things because they will think you're still at risk. Or if you've got your license for like three years in the UK, oh, by then your insurance is going to drop. You're not going to be paying as such because they think you've got the UK driving experience. There's tendency that you're not going to kill somebody and you're not going to damage your car in an accident. So they trust you more. If you've got family or so, it's going to determine how much you're going to pay. If you're single, they will think you have no reason. <laughs> it's not like you don't have reason to live, but then you're still at higher risk of driving reckless. If you're single or you're young, you're still at higher risk risk of driving recklessly but if you've got family they believe you're going to consider your children you've left at home or your husband your wife and you're going to drive more carefully so some those of those things are going to determine how much you're going to be paying on your insurance so presently i am paying 20 pounds per month <laughs> on my car insurance then we have the road tax if you've got a car, you need road tax when you want to buy your car before you even drive it before you even own the car and drive it from wherever, as long as you're going to be on the road, you need to pay your road tax. There was one car I had, and that car was paying 120 pounds per year. But then I got another car, and that car cost 600 pounds a year for road tax. But the present car we've got just now is just 30 pounds a year on road tax. 30 pounds a year. Can you see the difference? So with time, with, uh, with understanding, with the more you know the country, the more you know the trick, the more your expenses is going to reduce. So right now I'm paying 30 pounds a whole year for my road tax because of the type of car I'm getting. If you want to get car, go to the UK website and check the road tax for the particular car you want to get. Once you know the name of the car, Toyota, RAV, for whatever car you want to get, whatever car you want to get, type it in the system. If you know the plate number, it's even the best. Maybe you want to buy a second hand car or it's not new. Once you, you've seen the car, you like it, type that plate number in the website and to show you how much you're going to pay for insurance it will show you how much you're going to pay for tax it will show you how much the car is worth the mileage how when last the person serviced it is a long story it's going to tell you everything about that car so that is one trick i want you to take out of this video is check those things because it will also determine how much you're going to be spending my mot which is ministry of transport test you have to test your car every year to be sure that your car is roadworthy your car is still fine for the road is not going to kill somebody the engine is still intact so mot can range from 29 to 60 pounds depending on where you're doing it and also depend on what type of car and um the company that is going to check your car so these are some of the things that you can save on but presently my fuel sometimes i can i can buy fuel for maybe 20 pounds and two three weeks the fuel is still there because i changed my job i don't take car to work i just walk five to six minutes to my workplace and i'm not driving as such the only place i go is if i'm going to drop off the children which they don't even like me dropping them because they can't ride their bicycle so they prefer even cycling while i walk behind them or going to for shopping just little local runs. We don't travel at such again, so we hardly spend anything on fuel. So what I would say I'm spending on fuel just now in a month is less than 
50 to 100 pounds a month but if you don't have a car and you're going to be transporting you're going to be taking the bus to work if you're in london you will need the oyster card that you recharge and you use on each trip then other part of the uk also you can recharge a month depending on what part of the uk you're staying recharge a month then it will be your trip will be deducted from that card you can be paying from one 1.75 to 5 pound depending on how far that place is that is on a trip but one other advice i will give to you is to get day trip usually if you're on day shift or you're going and coming by that same day buy day saver those day savers are usually cheaper you can buy five pound and that five pound you can use it whole day from morning to night even if you go hundred times you can see you that same ticket that is a day saver but if you're just going one trip you're paying one point something 1.7 1.7 and you just keep going back and forth you're going to be spending more so if you're going to be using the bus ask for day saver ask for card where you just it can take maybe 80 trips on one card ask for cheaper options don't just keep paying like that because you're going to be spending a lot of money on transportation so presently i'm not spending anything on transportation because my work is just close to my house and i'm just using my leg i just walk if i want to but sometimes if i'm very late i can I, I can just take the car but it's just two minutes one other thing that takes my money or that i pay for every month is for union membership union is a group of people that are legally known and accredited in the uk to cover you for any medical malpractice the legal says 18 pounds every month to join a union those union are the one who will back you up legally in case of any medical negligence any medical mistake you make these people are the one you can talk to they will help you get a lawyer and they will cover you for any charges god forbid you kill somebody or you cause injury or accident to somebody unintentionally if it is intentionally of course you know it may be imprisonment and whatever is acceptable but if it is a mistake you know like medical malpractice mistakenly you've done something and it has hurt somebody and you need to go to court these are the people that will back you up they can help you cover as much as one million pounds that is the one i joined and i'm paying 17.23 almost 18 pounds monthly i've not used them thank god but in case what if you need them one day the union i joined is called unison and there are other ones depend on the part of the uk you're living it is really advisable for you because it is very easy in the uk to lose your pain as a health worker or as a nurse or whoever you are it is also very easy to make those simple mistakes that you don't know but these people are the ones that will cover you up they will get you lawyers they will go with you they will advise you what you should do and if you have questions they are always there they've got groups on facebook on whatsapp to talk to you to give you legal advice and any other concern you've got i also subscribe to netflix in my other video then i was using amazon prime but now no we are bigger than that now we have advanced girl <laughs> okay so your girl has advanced to netflix i subscribe for netflix and i pay 8.99 pounds every month almost nine pounds every month to watch videos and then i can connect three to four devices at the same time that means i can be watching netflix and three other devices laptop tv television whatever it is is still watching netflix at the same time you can ask for a cheaper package actually if you're single you can be paying like seven pound or something cheaper so i pay for netflix every month just to watch film in the uk you need to pay for your tv license to use television to watch normal free view station you need to pay for tv license and the first payment is 26 pound 25 fees which is 26 that's almost 27 pound that's what you pay first but then about 13 pounds monthly just to because i have television in my house these are the things you get for free in your country but in the uk everything is money everything is money you need to pay for everything I initially when i came i thought if i don't watch a particular station i'm not going to need to pay anything for tv license but then i started getting letters telling me if i don't pay then i'll be in trouble i'm going to face the law oh i had to quickly register to pay for tv license i am using talk talk which is a broadband that the one that provides you service internet what we call internet in nigeria or what we call data in nigeria that we need to pay to mtn to glow all those ones but in the uk you have different type of broadband apparently i'm with talk talk and it is a fast broadband which you might upload because you know i do youtube videos and those things because i need a very fast internet and what i'm paying is 23.27 pounds monthly almost 24 pounds that's what i pay for my broadband which is my internet i have landline also but i don't even know the number i don't i, I don't know I, I don't care about that you can also use your landline and then at the end of the month they will give you your bill how much you've used on that landline i don't pay school fees because you know school fees is free to young children in primary school 
and secondary but in scotland your first degree is free of charge so i'm not paying that's what i was saying in other island they don't pay council tax but then when their children get to the university they need to pay school fees but in scotland first degree is going to be free as long as they are already three years in the country so that is where i'm going to get all those my council tax money that i'm going to recover it when because i've got three children i imagine paying three children's school fees saving three children's school fees is university from that means from now until they're in the university i don't need to pay a dime that is one benefit of scotland yes i don't pay school fees but then i need to pay for milk per term the, the child who is in primary one and two for me i don't pay for his milk i don't pay for his lunch it's free they get lunch in school but the one who is older he is in primary four and above primary three primary four and above i pay for his milk is about 11 pound per term which is about three months i think and his lunch is not that expensive between 20 something pounds so depending on what you want and then there and there you we have sometimes we have to pay maybe to tell you donation to this or funny donation to this that donation and that it can be one pound two pound those are minor minor money that will be coming out that is not relevant then uniform of course at the beginning of the term i have outgrown their their clothes and you want to get them new clothes it is not that expensive from in asda or maybe george you can get shirts of maybe their uniform can be 10 pound 15 pound here and there socks and those little things that you're going to be spending money on it is nothing serious and now almighty feeding my feeding is divided into two african food and abroad fruit <laughs> You know, you can take your baby girl out of the village, but you cannot take the village out of your baby girl. You know, if I don't eat African food, I feel like I'm going to die the next day. So yes, my African food can cost me more than the, the groceries, which is other things like milk, bread, uh, bacon, those little, little things you buy in the store here. They are more cheaper than my African food because you know of the importation and exportation costs. So when I go to African store or for a family of five, if we're buying big things like gari i have a video where i went to african store and i'm sure i think i showed you the prices of what you can expect those things to be in the uk of course now i'm also considering importing some of my food from nigeria so then i will be saving more money on those things so monthly i will say for family of five i can spend up to 200 pounds but that's 100 pounds depending if i'm going to buy maybe big bag of rice big bag of semo big bag of pando but if i've already got those things before and i'm just going for top up i can spend like 50 100 pounds on african food which will be like oil little things maggi those little spices those little little things can be let's say let's just say for family of five 200 pounds per month on african food then the grocery I will still save between 150 to 300 depending on how much you eat in your house and depending on what you're buying if you're a single person I remember when i was alone in this country i don't spend much sometimes a whole day i can just eat egg bacon egg bacon conflict egg bacon conflicts for one week or three days five days i don't bother cooking and i was not spending as much money i can spend between maybe 50 to 100 pounds in a whole month and i'll be fine happy and i was even fatter then but so depend on how much you eat your preference and so grocery is a personality it's not too expensive and then um, in my other video i showed you uh i think i showed you the store because now there's a lockdown and i can't be going about the store filming to show you the price of those things but then i have a video in the past that shows you how much those grocery cost right on the shelf but that is what i spend on feeding between for family of five between 300 to four five hundred a month should be enough my not my nothing that i also spend on like uh, my epidemic sound it is the music i play in some of my videos i subscribe monthly and in a year i'm paying 99 pounds which is just my personal preference because i'm a youtuber and if you're a nurse you're going to need your nfc renewer don't forget this i almost made that mistake i almost lost my pin guys i almost lost my pin after i was a year here i forgot to pay my 120 pounds because you need to pay 120 pounds yearly for your license and i forgot when i remembered it was already three weeks and thank god i was given grace period of one month so by the time i checked my license was almost suspended if you don't pay your license with no money you're going to lose your pin or you're going to have to apply again and it is a lot of money a lot of process it is not good for you so please remember to set direct debit for all these things in fact i've set direct debit for the next year 
and I don't can't be bothered because every year you need to pay this amount of money, 120 pounds. It is better to set direct debit for these things. If you're if you're going to be living in your house for long, set direct debit for your rent, set direct debit for your for your council tax, set direct debit for your for your NMC where you know her. For your, your everything, just reg, make sure you set direct debit for them so you can keep on top of them. Because if you're owing and you begin to receive letter that you're owing this, you're owing that. And also if you're taking money from the bank, overdraft, all this will affect your credit score. Because if you want to get house, you want to get mortgage in the future, they will go back. They're going to assess how good you are with money, how much you've been owing. And have you been paying your debts? All this will accumulate and it will stand against you in the law. <laughs> it was not against you on the judgment day of you wanting to borrow or of you wanting to get a house on mortgage. I hope I've covered all of the topic. If there's something I've not covered or if you have a different experience where you're living, if you want to share it, please drop a comment down below. Share your experience with me or not just helping me but helping somebody who is new, who is considering coming to live in the area where you're living. And please, if you don't mind also, can you just please say where you're living, if it is England, maybe the name of your town and how much you're paying for, especially your rent. If you're paying council tax and those little things, just please drop it in the comment section below. And somebody who is interested in coming to that part of your country, or the part, that part of the UK where you're living, we also just read it and that will also help them to make their decision to decide where they want to come in the UK and not to be scared of coming because of the expenses or the fear of the expenses. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for your love. I love you to the moon and back. I will see you again in another video. Make your request down below and please remember to check this description box because that's where I'm going to be putting the link to my old videos. I love you. I will see you again in another video. Before then, please take care of yourself. Remember to press the subscribe button. Stay safe. Bye. For now, I love you. Bye.